Hey everyone, welcome to another session by K21 Academy. In this video, we'll be learning about the most important Python libraries in the field of data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So, if you have been wanting to start your career in the field of data science, now is the best time. And where do I even start with Python? It is emerging so rapidly in the technical sector that it might even replace all the existing programming languages in the very near future. Moreover, having the knowledge of data science and Python is the best combination. Even if you don't know a little about Python or even if you don't belong to any technical bike background, you still can learn Python in so many easy ways. And now comes the major question that why do I choose Python? Well, Python is very powerful and easy to use. Students and researchers with basic knowledge can use Python and start working on any platform. Choice of libraries. Well, Python provides a huge collection of libraries, machine learning and AI libraries as well. It is highly scalable and faster language when compared to any other language. It has amazing graphical and visualization tools and libraries that will help you to analyze your data well. Let us understand what exactly a library is. Am I talking about the libraries that we see in our school and colleges? Well, no. In general sense, a library is a piece of reusable code. Most useful libraries concentrate around a single topic. Example, crypto, we have wrappers for API, we have different uh, climate models, we have database access, literally anything. So Python libraries are a set of useful functions that eliminates the need of writing codes from the scratch. There are over more than lakhs of Python libraries present today, and they play a vital role in developing machine learning, data science, data visualization, image and data manipulation applications, and many other things. So now let us understand our first library that is matplotlib. There are numerous of libraries present in Python and this particular library that is matplotlib is one of the most successful and commonly used libraries that provide a variety of tools for data visualization in Python. It is cross-platform, it is the most powerful library that provides various tools to create 2D plots from data in lists or arrays in Python. To your knowledge, it was created and coded by John D. Hunter in the year 2003. Also, it provides a procedural interface called PyLab, which is used to design to make it work like MATLAB. It is similar to plotting in MATLAB as it allows users to have a full control over the fonts, the lines, the colors, the styles, the access properties like we do in MATLAB. To make you more aware about it, so I'll just show you a small tutorial so that you'll just have an overview how it looks like. So I've imported the libraries and I have used matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I can use it anything. I can use xyz. But for the sake of nomenclature, I'm using .plt. And after that, I've used the label function to define the labels. And in the next thing, you can see that I have used both things on the x-axis and the y-axis as well. Also, we can understand that how the matplotlib is able to show the categorical values as well. We have different type of categorical values. We have binary, we have dichotomous, we have normal variables, and we have ordinal variables as well. And it is very important for us to understand these variables, which you can understand later on when we give some surprise for you. So that was it for matplotlib, just a basic overview. All right, everyone. So now we learn about Plotly. So let, Plotly is an open source Python library built on top of the Plotly JavaScript library that enables the Python users to create beautiful interactive web-based visualizations. 
This library supports over 40 unique data types covering a wide range of statistical, financial, geographic, uh, scientific, and three-dimensional use cases. Also, Plotly is a platform to create data visualization. You can use it with Python, R, Julia, and a few other languages as well. It is incredibly user-friendly, and it has an extensive documentation that allows us to create very powerful graphs and charts with a few lines of code. Its biggest advantage is its ability to deploy the graphs onto web as web applications. We can use Dash for this. All right, so now let me show you a small, small tutorial of how and how does it look like and what exactly it is. Okay, so as you can see, I have imported the Plotly library and now I'm using the scatter function to show a scatter plot. We also can use different functions to show the lines lines in terms of we can you know you can we sh can show a linear graph and we can use the dot bar function to show the different bar graphs as well also we can show different scatter plots and bar graphs and many other kind of data by using plotly moving to our next library in the list that is seaborn and it's a library for making statistical graphics in Python. It builds on top of Matplotlib and integrates very closely with Pandas data structures. Also, it helps you to explore and understand your data very well. Its plotting functions operate on data frames and arrays containing the whole data sets and internally perform the necessary semantic mapping and statistical aggregation to produce informative plots. Also, its dataset oriented and declarative API lets you focus on what the different elements of your plots mean, rather than on the details of how to draw them. So basically, if you're working on this, you'll get the very minutest details about the whole graph. And to make you more aware about it, I will just show a small demo to you so that you can see how it's working or what exactly it is or how it looks like. Okay, so I have imported all the libraries that I would require. I have imported Pandas, SPD, Matplotlib, Sci-Fi, and Seaborn. And we are getting the list of data sets that are available for the practice purpose. So I'm just trying to load the data set of car clashes. And here you can see that we can use this plot using set function to make it look more attractive. Also, I can choose any kind of color from the color palette function. And you can see that I have loaded a data set. And after that, I am using the rel plot method in the Seaborn library that gives me access to different kind of levels of functions that depict the relationship between two variables. And there are many other more functions that can be performed all you got to do is have some patience and hold on to the seats and then you can dive in with the whole depth course. Moving to our next library in the list that is NLTK. It stands for Natural Language Toolkit. And what does the NLTK mean? It means it's a platform used for building Python programs that work with human language data for applying statistical natural language processing, that is NLP. The NLTK library contains various utilities that allow you to effectively manipulate and analyze the linguistic data. Among its advanced features are the text classifiers that you can use for many kinds of classification, including sentimental analysis. To make you more aware, sentimental analysis is a practice of using algorithms to classify various sample of related text into overall positive and negative categories. With NLTK, you can employ these algorithms through powerful built-in machine learning operations to obtain insights from the linguistic data, and we can easily identify what's a negative sentence, what's a positive sentence, or maybe what sentence is neutral. To make you more aware about it we have a small demo so that you can see how exactly it looks like i'm not going to go in depth just an overview okay so i have imported nltk i have i'm using the uh, sentence breaking i'm trying to break the sentence into chunks so that that is what we call tokenizing so i have tokenized our word into a list that says this is our first program of nltk and after that i'm trying to 
some gain some insights about the part of speech so in this i have used this function you can check that we are able to very easily analyze the, what function or what part of speech it is and after that i am using the word limitizer that basically means what is the root of the word for example i have used enjoying so enjoying comes from enjoy and similarly i have used calves that come from calf and nlt is full of more enjoyable examples all you got to do is wait for some time and we have something for you coming up all right so next library in our list is open cv which stands for open source computer vision it was generated to support a common infrastructure for computer vision operations and use system behavior in financial products it generally targets image processing, face recognition, video capture, searching, and object disclosure. I will share some real life examples where OpenCV is being used. First is face detection that unlocks your phone so, so fast. Well, the detection works on grayscale images, so it is important to convert the color image to a grayscale image. And then we have detect multi skill function which is a general function that detects objects. Since we are calling it on the face casket, that is what it, de it detects. The first opinion is the grayscale image and the second one could be a scale factor. That's another function we'll discuss about later. And another example where OpenCV is being used is the rover you see in the image. NASA is using it and a complex sequence of activities is required for a rover to approach a target and place an instrument in the contact with it. So currently, they are primarily addressing the problem of instrument placement or once over the rover at the target. So we can feel open CV in our daily lives by these examples. Moving to our next library, that is Scikit-Learn. And I will not explain about it. Rather, I'll try to show you a case study where it's being used in our real life. So, statistical machine learning methods are increasingly used for neuroimaging data analysis. So, what you see on your screen is an image of neuroimaging. Their main virtue is the ability to model high dimensional data sets. Example could be multivariate analysis of activation images or maybe resting state time series. So supervised learning is typically used in decoding or encoding settings to relate brain images to behavioral or clinical observations, while unsupervised learning can uncover the hidden structures in the sets of images, that is resting state functional of MRI, or uh, find subpopulations in the large cohorts. By considering different functional neuroimaging applications, the paper illustrates how scikit-learn can be used to perform some key analysis steps. So, in scikit-learn, all objects and algorithms accept input data in the form of 2D arrays or sample sizes and features. This convention makes it generic and domain independent. The scikit-learn objects are you know, they're sharing a uniform set of methods that depends on their purpose. So we have different type of predictors, that is estimators, predictor, and transformers. So I'll not be discussing about these in much depth. You can learn this in our next of the courses. So I'll just share a gist of how it looks like, how scikit-learn looks like with very simple examples. So let me walk you through with it. All right, so I have imported all the libraries and when we need to scale our data features, we use the min max scalar module and feature scaling is basically when we want to identify the greatest value in each column and divide all of the data by that highest value. So as a result, our column would look like this and then we'll be fitting the min max scalar on our random data set for data generated now we'll try to fit that data well and to split the data we convert the, the numpy array into a data frame and i have taken up the top of 30 data frames in the screen and then we just define our data frames and then we perform the other functions that are required when uh, while doing the train test split and if it is not able you know if you're not able to understand it then it's all right it's your first time and we have something for you coming up so just keep watching the video till the end
Next in our list is PyTorch and it's an open source machine learning library based on the Torch library used for applications such as computer vision and natural language processing, primarily developed by Facebook's AI research lab that is FAIR and it is free and open source software. So figuring out that the above picture represents a digit seven was no deal for you. You didn't even bother about the poor resolution of the image. Well, that's how amazing. We should take all the moments to thank our brains. Wonder how natural it is for our brains to process the image, classify it and respond back. It seems that we are gifted, right? Well, how difficult would it be for the human brain to imitate it? The deep learning in easy terms is the area of machine research where it allows computers to learn to perform tasks which are natural for the brain, like handwritten digit recognition. Technically, it involves more layers and more and more of data. To make you more aware about it, I'll just show a small, small tutorial or small, small overview as to how exactly the PyTorch looks like. Here I have used a very basic example. So I have imported the different kind of libraries I would require that is I've in uh, installed PyTorch, NumPy and Torch NN and Torch Vision. And to create sensors, I have used X, W and B labels. And I have, I want to build a computational graph. So I have used these functions. So Y is equal to W, X plus B. That is a kind of line. And the autograd is a way of automatic differentiation in Python. So basically it is used for uh, partial differentiation and we have different kind of child rule, demo rules, etc. And after that, I have used the backward method to compute partial differentiation. So here you can see that it's very easy to print out these tensors and I have used the print function to print out the final tensor. It's a very, very basic thing, but moving ahead, it's, it's very interesting and more complex. So stay tuned for our surprise. Next library in our list is Kiras. It's an open source high level neural network library, which was written in Python and is capable enough to run on Theano, TensorFlow or CNTK. It was developed by one of the Google engineers. Also, it is made user-friendly, extensible and modular for facilitating faster experimentation with deep neural networks. It not only supports the convolutional networks and recurrent neural networks individually, but also a combination of both. And some of the major use cases of Kiras are the heart disease detection. It could be face mask detection that was recently developed. Also, it can play your favorite game that is rock, papers and scissors. So I will just give you a small walkthrough to see the overview of Kiras and you can learn more about it in depth in our next courses. So here I have imported NumPy, TensorFlow and Kiras and we have used model and data parameters. Uh, the data this is the split between train and data sets. And we have to scale the images to zero and one range. And image shape is given. We have to convert the class vectors to binary class matrix matrices. And after that, uh, this is how we create a neural network architecture using sequential method. And this method returns the summary of the whole neural network architecture. Moving next, we can see that before training, we need to compile it and define its loss function and different kind of metrics for predictions. And after training the model, the next step is to evaluate the model for accuracy. And here we can check that how much we have gained and how much we have lost. So if you're not able to understand it, it's all right. We have many more things for you coming up. Next in our list is stats model. Well, it's a Python module that provides various functions for estimating different statistical models and performing statistical tests. So first, what we do is we define the set of dependently and independently variables. If the dependent variable is non-numeric form, then it is first converted to numerical form using dummies. And 
it provides a logit function to perform logistic regression and it accepts x and y as different parameters and returns a logit object well in short it is used for high level statistical modeling and let me just show you how it looks like okay so in this i have imported the stats model library i have imported pandas i have imported different libraries so that it becomes easier for us to perform and now i have created a data frame and i have used the last five data frames to show up on my screen i have also used the drop any parameters and after that you can see that uh, there's a missing value so in order to uh, remove remove the missing value i have just dropped out the complete column the missing column and there you can see i have uses the, the matrices in different names you can just use the different kind of functions to just put it down on the screen and now i have used describe model fit model and summarize model to get us the right outputs i have used used rest dot params to show us on the screen i have used r squared as well and at the end i have used the plot to plot and as well as linear and a scatter plot so you can see that how the stats model is helping us to get the data more accurately and you need not to worry about if you're not able to understand this you'll be able to understand everything when we go in depth coming to our last library in the list that is tensorflow and it is my favorite as well it's an open source ai library using data flow graphs to build models it allows developers to create large scale neural network with different multiple layers and it is mainly used for classification perception understanding discovering prediction and creation so i will just start off with the case study that i recently came across uh, we all know that airbnb is a marketing place and it it is featuring millions of homes travelers around the world search on the platform and discover the best homes for their trips and aside from the price and the location my personal first criteria would be to see how the homes are or how the different rooms look like and here in the image you can see that we have two images and one could be a bedroom and other one could be a living room but we are able to distinguish it so well right and similarly i recently came across that we knew very little about these important photos when a guest interacted with one of the airbnb people they got to know that this information has to be conveyed in the photos that was very accurate and it advised the host about how to improve the appeal of the images in a scalable way and that is when i realized that tensorflow was playing a very important role at the back end and it made the images more clear it segregated the images more clearly and that is how the travelers are trusting airbnb so well and they are doing so 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 well in the past years so i'll just give you a small walk through and then we'll see that how you can learn tensorflow in depth so here you can see that i have imported the tensorflow fun uh, library as tf and we can create different tensors as well i have just used the constant function and we can print it out as well now to access the tensor value i have used the numpy function so i have just called it in the parameters and after that we can also print out the different kind of constant numbers that we have used and here i have performed additional subtraction multiplication and division operations to make the program more simpler and you need not to get worried about the kind of digits and numbers you are seeing here because you'll be learning this in the near future with us and now you can see if i've used the product product thing and now it is coming out it is showing us the product so it's all easy it's all easy you need not to worry about it we have many many surprises for you all right everybody so i hope you enjoyed this session and if you are really intrigued by the kind of use cases we did and if you really want to learn those real time use cases then you can save your seat if you really want me to save your seat for our free class on python for data science and data engineers then add your name to the waitlist and i will be personally sending you out email when it's the go go time also this free class will have all the basic concepts evolving around ai and ml 
all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash python02 and just add your name to the waitlist. And till then, keep hustling and take care.